Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the Stat 11 show for Tuesday night's game between the Republic of Ireland and Bulgaria. I'm joined by Gary Spain and John Kerr. And uh, we're going to get straight into it. This is the team we would like to see. We're going to go three ways about it and we're going to have to, I suppose, outstrike each other two to one if we can't, if we can't agree. So, we're planning a coup. <laughs> yeah, so, to mix it with experience and youth, Anyway, but for me, in goals, I would like to see Mark Travers start this game. He's played Premier League game already. Um, Eddie Howe seems to like him. Uh, he's came in now that Begovic has actually gone on to Carabag now. So, for me, he shows he, he showed what he was capable of against Spurs. And Spurs are a top-level team. They were in Champions League final last season. So, yeah. for me, I would like to see Mark Travers there. I'd understand if he had an argument. Yeah, for choosing out, I'd start match. Absolutely, and I, I think yeah. it's important to blood another keeper because if Randolph, the current situation, if Randolph gets an injury, we have no international experience on the bench unless Westwood. Well, Westwood has been, prob- yeah, yeah, he's been there or thereabouts. And I, I, I if think he's he fit and available. Like Arthur, yeah, so, so mm. if he's fit and available, yes, I, I think Kieran Westwood is the backup. Um, but I, I, I would like we, to see Travers get some serious international Mark, experience. We need to yeah. play Mark Travers. I do Mark think Travers. it's. I think he will play as well, by the way. But he would be my choice. Yeah, anyway. I do think it's testament to say though as well. I don't think we actually touched on the previous videos. Darren Randolph is actually such a calming presence yes. in the team. It's like when he gets the ball or comes oh. back to him, you don't be worried like you would be with other keepers. He's very calming on the ball. His distributions is quite good as well. But I think I think Travers. Um, will will do well to even once he does get it, and I I think he'll do well to oust him. Like Darren's played a hundred consecutive games with Mills, yeah. as we touched on. He's he's really looks after himself. He's you know, unquestionably our number one. It's yeah. not even up for debate. Yeah, think, yeah. It's just point. to get, see what yeah. Travers would be like at international level. I suppose yeah. is the best way. Yeah, but of, it's Darren a meteoric get... rise for him as well. Yeah, sorry, for, it's for Travers. It's been a meteoric rise over the oh, last yeah, year. Yeah. I don't think it have been anywhere yeah. near the start in eleven. For an Ireland game twelve months ago. Oh yeah, no, no way. No, they had Sean McDermott and yeah. uh, Kieran O'Hara as well. No, it was Doyle. Oh yeah, Kieran O'Hara was it was he's, in the squad, but Doyle yeah. actually Colin Doyle wasn't. It? Yeah, uh, he he was actually playing, and like everyone's like, well, he's like thirty something. Why is Fair he enough. in the team? I would have rather seen O'Hara at the time, but uh, I do think Travers is ahead of O'Hara now. Obviously playing Premier League I football, so, yeah. I do think O'Hara is a talented goalkeeper as well. Yeah, and we've yeah. two. I don't want to go off topic again. Back yeah. to the under twenty ones. We've two yeah. very talented yeah, yeah, keepers yeah. coming through there as yeah. well. Um, then at right back, uh, I I would actually like to keep a bit of experience there. I'd like to see Coleman start the game at captain the team as well. Are you sorry, Paul, but um, I know I take your Everton hat off here, but I I would actually play Cyrus Christie as right back. I think I he's I know he's got quite a bit of experience, but uh, I think I'd like to give him another game. I think Seamus. He's got a Premier League game at the weekend as well. Had a really tough game. I look, he's our captain. He's our right back. But for Tuesday, night, about, like if, uh, if yeah, it's coming okay. from an Everton fan, I'd like to see him maybe like okay. take a rest of the game from yeah. an Irish point of view. I'd like to see him in there just because he's the captain. Okay, well he is. I mean, he is our captain without yeah. question. But I, I, I would. Ideally, I suppose had Matt Doherty been available, but yeah. he's not. Oh, but, um, massively unfortunate. Yeah, he's I, injured. I would. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm conscious of the need to play a few experienced players with. But um, yeah, I just, well, because I, you had, you're, you're out Randolph as well. Yeah, so okay. Forget. I'd yeah. almost play Christie, and I, I think Doherty is definitely ahead of in the pecking order. I'm also a big Leo O'Connor fan, and I, if he'd been available, I would have even now that he's gotten his move to Celtic, I would I, I wouldn't think it'd be a terrible idea to get him some international experience. Okay. But I think we need to play with a different captain right now because I think that we need to share that responsibility and that leadership around the team. I think if we need to give the armband to players like Duffy and to Randolph uh, and McLean to encourage that almost that senior player mentality around. And I, I think sharing the armband around for for players like you would have done with O'Shea and Dunn and Given back in the day might not have been not might not be the worst thing in the world for this team. Yeah, but I thought the captaincy was shared quite around under O'Neill anyway. That doesn't really need to be the case. Yeah. He, he was giving it to a different player every week because Coleman was injured, so it was getting quite annoying actually. I didn't I wasn't a fan of it personally. Um but I, I see your point. I just I just I just like to have you know, that's the captain and that's the vice captain and, and that's it. And if I was to pick a vice captain it would be Shane Duffy. Uh, me too. Yeah. Um right. but if you're going for, for a right back I'd say probably Cyrus Christie. Okay. So he's a going Christie two to one. 
That's yeah, that's okay. That's no problem. But look, I, if I, if Cyrus yeah, is yeah. in there, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I, I just yeah. feel as I don't think he's our best right back available, but I think it would be handy. I think he'd be doing well to get as many caps as he can now, and the fact that Doherty's out, he's probably benefiting. Yes, I, I agree. Absolutely. Now he could he could still I know it didn't really work out in the central midfield for him under O'Neill, but <laughs> <laughs> he, he could still do a job on the, the right mm, maybe as well. Maybe I would I think we've got much better a lot of better options. He he has a lot of athleticism and he, he does get up and down very well. So he I, uh, and he, yeah. he does turn up I, I, for us as well consistently yeah, he um, scored a couple of goals too to be fair stood yeah. in, and he stood in well for Coleman yeah so, we, 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 we needed definitely. him too um, but then moving into to, I suppose your two centre backs and for me and I it's, it's spoken about in one of the other videos that I would like to see Duffy and Egan start together yeah. to see that partnership maybe develop um, Shane Duffy we know what we're going to get from as I said since the Euros he's come in and he's been his, his rise has been unbelievable since he came up with Brighton to the Premier League and he's improved enormously um, obviously he left Everton quite early on went to Blackburn and earned his trade right back up to the top um, but Gary what would be your yeah well I, I think John Egan would definitely start in my book I think he does yeah he's he done the press conference today so I imagine he, yeah, he'll be in it yeah. he, he's He's certainly knocking on the door, and I know John is even making the case for him to to start in Tbilisi as well. And yeah, I think start with with Shane Duffy That's because the start in for Tbilisi very well now. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. We uh, yes, I, I I actually would, and conscious of the need to have a bit of experience, have Shane Duffy at the back as well. So yeah, I, I would certainly agree with that that pairing. Yeah, no argument for me either. I think Duffy should be getting in as much experience growing into a leadership role on the side and I think Egan deserves his chance now yeah. after the way he's played over the last season and a half at Sheffield yeah and I, I think moving on to left back then I think this is the only reason I'm doing this and picking this player in this position is because Ender Stevens is out so I'd like to see McLean actually play left back just to see how he gets on because he's more than likely going to play that position against Georgia if he keeps playing left back for Stoke so I think it would make sense to maybe play him there to see as a settled left back I know he's played left wing back but they're totally different positions yes, okay. yeah yeah are we going for four 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 three three? I, I or think four, I, four two. Or? I, I think we go the same as the four three three. Four three three. Okay. As, as, as we're Mick staying plays. as a back four. So yeah. So I think we stay as a back, back four. four. Unless Mick decides yeah. he wants well, to this is what, this, formation. But well, this is what we're going with. Of yeah. course, I, th- I okay. think this is well, Doherty's injury effect is mass- massively. I think would actually be and given that um given that both Doherty and Egan playing a three five two, I think had Doherty been fit at three three five two might have been a good system to try it for this game. But obviously, with that injury, I would stick with yeah. our current system. Yes, yeah, but if you were to pick a left back, who, who would you have there for for this, this game? game? I'd, I'd probably, for the reasons you were saying, pick McLean. Um, I think, and I've said this previously, I think it's a pity Ryan Manning isn't anywhere around the squad, mm. given his form for QPR. Um, I think Doherty, I would have even tried at left back as well if he was available. But I think McLean is probably your, your best shout to put there for uh for Tuesday particularly if he's going to be possibly playing against Georgia in that position. Yeah, McCarthy said he was the second choice left back. Well, well he, he did, he did say that, yeah. And he, that he was the cover for Enda Stevens if he got injured. Well, Mick is the manager like and if that's what he, what he thinks, then I think McLean definitely needs that experience. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's... Uh, so, we sat with it. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Enda Stevens getting a little bit more time with left back, but the fact that he is out of the game at Tbilisi... Um, I think Sheffield United will want to keep him fit as two. Well, that's still yeah, well. yeah, he, he is playing very well. You know, uh, despite what people said about yeah. playing for him the other night. You know, okay. to finish finished the game strongly. I, I'm, I I'm, so I, I, I'm always happy to have James McLean in an Irish team. So, yeah, I definitely... Um, yeah, yeah, fair. I Go meant Stevens that. as uh, finishing the game strong. Uh, obviously, McLean did too. Uh, I'm wa- fully wa- fully warranted to start place for the way he finished because without him, we would have lost that game. Um, then going into centre mid and, and as a one defensive midfielder I'd love to see in there and we spoke about previously is Josh Cullen. Yeah, absolutely one hundred percent. I think I I think he will start and I think I'd I'd love to see him start on Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. I think Josh that this Cullen, is his yeah. chance to maybe take take his moment. And yeah. to, you know, um, if going forward this could be his, his position. You know, uh, John. I yeah. don't want to go like, too much into it because I know we touched on it in the preview yeah. about uh, okay. yeah. about um, no. Josh. So we kind of know. We don't really I think just to, ourselves. Yeah, just to re- reiterate, I think the fact he's been for a successful team means that we should absolutely have him in our. Um, given how Charlton Tra- have started started the season, he's a form player. I would definitely have him in the defensive mid, particularly. Uh, and I've touched upon this in the last video. Glenn Whelan isn't going to be around forever. I think picking a younger player to maybe assume that mantle. For the long term, it wouldn't be any harm to get him that defensive midfield experience now. Okay. 
Yeah. I don't think there's any reason why yeah. Anthony yeah, Porterita no, Avida. Yeah. Um, then if you're going uh, as the other centre midfielder, and this one was, might be controversial, maybe it's more of a fantasy for me <laughs> or anything like that, because I know the guy personally, but Jack Byrne, I'd love to see start in there uh, as the other centre midfielder. Yeah, I'd I'd like to see Jack Byrne. He's an, even as a League of Ireland fan as well, although not a Rovers fan by any means. But yeah, yeah, I'd like to see Jack Byrne in there. I think he'll play on Tuesday night. I'm not sure if he'll start. No, I yeah. think he'll be off the bench. I think he'll be but off. Would the you bench if well. you're if you were Mick McCarthy? Would you start like right now? Like as a, in a fantasy world? I actually, and I hope the League of Ireland fans don't come for me for this, but I I think if we are to look into mix experience with uh with, with newer players or fresher players i'd almost be looking at maybe having cullen and brown or cullen and then the two hendrick and huran because i don't think we want to chop and change too much and i think hendrick and huran are definitely two players who it would be fantastic if they gained a bit of form if they one of them nabbed a goal on tuesday night i think will be massively beneficial to the team the team psyche going forward so uh, I probably would let Jack Byrne come. I'd give him like twenty minutes, half an hour at the end of the game to hopefully stick a stick a banger in top bins. Uh, but I wouldn't play him for the full ninety. There you go. If you were to pick someone there, send him in. Yeah, I I I I'll go for Jack Byrne. Byrne. You go for him. I'd go for I'd pick Jack Byrne. Yeah. Okay, so we have. Okay. That's how you struck it's out. All right. Two to one. Okay. Right. So it's Jack Byrne, um, Josh Cullen, and then who I was going to actually play number ten. Was Alan Brown? I would have played Alan Brown number ten. I think that's his best position, and I think that's where he plays. So, yeah, I would, I would, I would agree with that. I, I want to hear uh, John's I'd argument. Different, Alan. I, I think Alan Judge played fantastically well. I think uh, he he's played well in a central position before, and I th- I'd like to see his creative influence kind of in in a central position. Well, I was looking more at George Moore as a, a a wing position, and that's what's going to kind of come on to. Uh, I think he's he's been effective on that right wing against. Um, did he come on with right wing against USA when he scored? I can't remember. It's a while back. Yeah. Okay, it's a while back. Yeah. I, I have a, now I have a different. I I I think Odell should be starting right wing. Okay, well we'll, 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 we'll come to that in a minute. We yeah. can stroke out with the with, with Alan Brown and Jack Brown, I suppose, with the two to one. Unfortunately, okay. uh, this wasn't premeditated, by the way. <laughs> <Okay>. Um <laughs> I I just I that that won't be the, the midfield three anyway. This is just what what I like fantasy. To see. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mick will obviously put someone more experience I think in the, in the centre midfield spot. But uh, I suppose then if you look at that swap, you've uh, Cullen, Byrne, Brown in there, and then if you're going with a with a three I think on the left personally I would like to see Ron and Curtis start there. Um, you might have different views on that. I would just like to see him start there. I think he's been kind of coming in and out of the squad last year, not really been getting a look in. And I think he's doing a little bit unfortunate because he had a really good season last year. Yeah, he's probably been unfortunate. I, I don't know if he'll get a chance to start. I I, I think you could play Callum O'Dowda on either wing. And mm-hmm. I, I was thinking maybe of playing uh, O'Dowda on the left and, and then bringing playing Georgie on the right. Um, mm. I, I don't know if that's what's going to happen and maybe I'm just trying to fit the, the team to yeah. suit the players well, I, I'd like I, to I, see I'd play. I'd be fairly much in agreement with uh, with John to either have either O'Dowda or, or, or George on the right-hand side, but you could, as you say, yeah. mix, mix them up. So. And there's no reason that they have to stick in those positions for the entire game. Yeah, We've seen O'Dowda on both flanks and he's played pretty well on both. Yeah, uh, And same with Judge is one of those players, uh, as we saw on, uh, on Thursday night, that pops up all over the pitch. So it might not be a harm to start them on the flanks and they can switch around. Yeah. What's that? 14. Um, but so if you if I had a gun to your head now, who would you put it left, left uh, wing? I'd say Callum O'Dowda then. Okay, you go O'Dowda. I'm going around with Curtis. I'd probably go O'Dowda myself. Okay, so he, I'm struck out there. So that's uh, O'Dowda on the left-hand side. Has he played much football this season? I haven't seen a lot of him or heard of him. I heard he had a bit of a trouble. With... His contract situation is a bit strange. He, yeah. Didn't he, there was a, talk of him going to Leeds over the summer yeah. and uh, Bristol City were quite open with Callum's situation and the likelihood of him leaving and yeah. then the he fact spoke he... about it in the press conference yeah. he said he, you know, he's just kind of seeing how things go but so, he, I don't he know did, I didn't he, see how he, he started did play, I think he did play just before this um, squad if I remember rightly okay well if he's playing yeah, so, I'd like to see him but I yeah. just think it makes sticking to his uh, guns and same players playing regularly I just think Kurt is playing more regularly in my opinion I'm going to be Honest, and I don't know if it's a controversial opinion, but I think right now, if we're looking at the rest of this qualifying campaign, I don't think Ronan Curtis is going to change the game again against any of the players that we have. I think a player playing at League One level, yeah, admittedly yeah. quite well, but I don't know if a League One player is going to be a game changer. Alan George, 
Alan Judge is a championship player who's playing in League One, and I think that there is some. Oh, he's played for years, and yeah, I think I, I think I think Judge hasn't played really above at a higher League level. One. Yeah, and in fairness, that uh, Judge has played most of his career um, at championship or maybe level. Maybe not most, but a lot of yeah. his career at championship level. So. Uh, I definitely would like to see Curtis come off the bench. Uh, I think he's a fantastic player, and I think he, in a couple of years he could be a greater player at a higher level. But um, for now, with experience for the next couple of games in mind, I'd probably start Judge and O'Dowd on the flanks. Okay. Well, that, that's the way it's going to use. Have uh, O'Dowd on the left hand side. Then if you're going right side, Judgey. Yeah, I'll go with that. Judge. Okay, that's a, that's a fair point. Um, and then if we're going centre forward. And the reason George gets in there is because of the way he finished the Denmark game came on the other night. He done well defensively and in an attacking role as well. He was playing centre forward at one point, you know. And as we said, he probably would have started against Gibraltar in yeah, June if he, he was yeah. yeah. But I think, I think it'd be he, yeah. an interesting way to see how he plays games from the start for mm-hmm. Ireland as well. Yeah. Um, up up top, um, I'd like to see James Collins just as a different dimension. Uh, just see what he could do at international level. He scores goals, you know, at every place he's been. He seems like a right handful. Um, he's my pick. Well, he wouldn't actually be my pick, although I like him. He's come up through the divisions with Luton and he scored, I think, is it three goals already in three? Yeah. He's won three, or uh, certainly impacted three games for Luton. He's scored important goals and they've done a bit better than expected as well. Another team they were expected to go down in the championship. I know who you're going for before you even say it. Well, I'm actually going gave for... gave it away, didn't he? I, I'm actually going for Scott Hogan. Yeah. I think he's he's a finisher. He The form he had a couple of years ago with Brentford when he was banging in those goals. We, we were talking earlier about Callum Robinson, about David McGoldrick. We don't have somebody that can put the ball in the net and we haven't had that since Robbie Keane. I'm not saying Scott Hogan is the answer mm-hmm. and he's not scoring regularly enough yet and he's not even well I think he's in and out of the Sheffield United team but, Stoke is it or, or Stoke he's is yeah, Stoke, sorry, yeah. Stoke he scored two a couple of weeks yeah ago. but I, he, he is someone I, I'd like to see thought he did well when he came on on Thursday and I'd like to see him start on no, Tuesday I, I, I don't want to be too harsh on him uh, because I would love uh, I'd love to be proven wrong with this but I think Scott Hogan was a finisher I think for the certainly in the games that I've seen him playing in Ireland shirt, he hasn't looked like a natural goal scorer. James Collins okay. has looked like a natural goal scorer for the last two or three years now. Um, okay. And now I think Hogan played fantastically when he came on. Uh, I think I, I said in the Switzerland video, it was him that Fire was creating. Right, yeah. yeah, it was that it was him that was creating the space for uh, for McGoldrick with a chance. So I'd love to come. I'd, I'd love nothing more for him to come off the bench, get a goal or two. But I think. Collins deserves his shout and I think you're right when we say that we need a natural finisher in the squad I think James Collins is more likely to be that than Scott Hogan is okay you don't have anything to counteract but no 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 I mean I'd, I'd like to I'd like to see James Collins get a run on Tuesday night as I well think... so I'm I'm happy to be outvoted if you want to, <laughs> no, to I'd put like it to see that both way yeah. play at some point yeah. I'd just like to see James Collins start the game Um that's just as I say, it's fancy that we're not going to agree on every position, and ultimately we didn't agree. We agreed maybe on the, I suppose back five, and everything else was kind of mm-hmm. a little bit different, yeah, you know. That's... Um, but yeah, I suppose that's the team then, with that, the uh, Travers and goal, Cyrus Christie at right back, um, outvoted, uh, Duffy and Egan, uh, centre back, which we all agreed, agreed on, on. Yeah. and then uh, McLean, McLean at left back, and then we had, um, J- Josh Cullen, Jack Byrne. Alan Brown, yeah, and then it Alan was uh, O'Dowda on the left hand side, oh, yeah. George on the right hand side, and then he had we had sorry, um, James Collins, James, James Collins as yeah. the centre forward, mm-hmm. focal point. Um, well, yeah, I suppose a huge thanks to the lads for coming on. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Who would you have starting that team? I know we're gonna always get you know so much interaction with the starting eleven show, so I'm looking forward to see what you guys have in in the comments, and uh, don't forget to like. This video, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't, I'll put a dislike on it. You know? <laughs> uh, don't forget to subscribe as always, and uh, huge thanks for watching. All right, huge thanks to the guys again. Check out uh, on Reddit the subreddit or Koi Big. Check them out. Don't forget to follow Gary on Facebook at Spain Gary as well. And John, you on face on Twitter if you want to shout it out there. I actually can't remember my Twitter handle. Last well, time. We, put, we put it in the link. In the <laughs> but uh, huge thanks to the lads for coming on. We'll speak to you all soon. Come on, you boys in green. Come on, you boys.